All right, so at this point, we technically have a top-down game, as boring as it is. What I'm going to do now is implement a system to give our player a certain number of lives and create a system such that we can end the game when their number of lives has been exhausted. Now, this is very easy to set up, so let's jump into Kismet. And for starters, here's what we've built so far. Our player spawn event has a max trigger count of 1. If you're not going to have any lives, you just want to play it once, and if you die, it's over, then this would be fine. But as soon as we want multiple lives where the player may be spawning multiple times, this really needs to be set to 0. Now I'm going to slide this back out of the way and disconnect its connection to the attached actor. In between these, I'm going to insert a new condition, counter, int counter. Now what an int counter does, it takes in a variable or it has a value, I guess I should say. It starts with a value in A, and it's going to increment that by a set amount. Each time it does, it's going to compare it against B. And as it reaches the criteria on the output side, you can have different things fire off. So maybe you start off with A equal to 0 and B equal to 1. If you increment by 1, A immediately becomes 1, so A equals B would be fired off. Just remember, it's going to do the increment each time you call on it. So yes, even the very first time you uh, call on the end counter, it's going to increment, then it's going to compare, and then it's going to take action. Now let's go ahead and take the out of our player spawn and we'll plug this in. What we want to do is we want this to actually decrement. We want to increment by a negative number. So I'm going to set our end counter to negative one. The reason we're doing this is that I want this to be an intuitive system, and intuitively you'd think, all right, well, I give the player a total of five lives. Each time they die, I take one away. And you could set this up in such a way where you could count up, but again, that would be a little bit on the counterintuitive side. So let's set up a variable. I don't want to actually hard code values in here. I don't want to have to dig very far to change the total number of lives for the player. So I'm going to right click on the A input and create a new int variable, at least for starters. So this will be the total number of player lives, and let's say we set this to 5. Now we're going to come over to B, and I'll right-click and create a new int variable as well. This will be the point at which the player has exhausted all of their lives, or technically just beyond this point. Once they go past 0 lives, game is over. Now this means they have a total of 5 lives. Because the first time we call on player spawn, we decrement, and 5 becomes 4. We compare against 0. So we're going to count down to 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 for a total of 5 lives. Now you can change this to any number you like. You give the player 3 lives, you give them 100 lives if you like. Now what we're going to do is take while A is greater than B and plug that into our attached to actor. So as long as value A is bigger than our bottom value, the game can still go on. Later on, we're going to set up a system such that when A drops below B, basically, when the number of lives goes below zero, we'll fire off something else that will end the game, but that's something we'll take a look at later. Now, one more thing. I really don't want to have to track down this sequence, find out where I stuck it, and then find this variable and change it just to change the total number of lives. Any important variable to gameplay, I want to store in a special location and access remotely via name variable. So I'm going to disconnect this. We'll select our variable. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a var name. So select the, uh, the variable and set its var name property to player lives. And we're just going to slide this up and out of the way. Now, down here, I'll right-click, create a new variable, which will be a named variable, and tell it to find the var name player lives, and there we go. So now it's kind of like a wireless connection where it's reaching out to this variable. Now, at any point, we'll be able to set this up in a nice area where we can find it easily, and that's something we'll take a look at a bit later. So what's going on? Player is spawned. We immediately start off with a player's total number of lives, which gets decremented, and then as long as it's greater than B, which it is going to be at least the very first time, then we're going to attach to actor and set up our camera. So that gives us a player, a, a set number of lives. Now, currently this is difficult to test because right now we don't have any end game parameters. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at this. 
So go ahead and jump out of Kismet. Be sure to save your level, and then we will continue in the next video.